Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is part three of a three-part series on chart settings for Thinkorswim. In each video, I clear up all of the confusion regarding which settings are going to affect all of your charts and which settings are affecting only the chart you're working from. There's a bit of confusion. I've seen it in the Q&A forum, and this video is going to help you understand how to work with your charts much more effectively and understand exactly how each of the settings are going to impact your charts. In this video, we're going to be covering the following tabs of the chart settings view. We've got favorite time frames, appearance, equities, options, futures, and forex. And also be sure to stick around for the bonus material at the end where we show some advanced topics on how to set up your charts exactly the way you prefer and save those settings so that you can apply them rapidly to new charts at any time that you need to. Before we get started on this video, I want to go ahead and review parts one and part two so that you understand what is included. So for part one, this actually applies to all three of the videos in the series. Each setting is demonstrated with real world examples, which means that I encourage you to follow along with each example on your own platform because it will help you to retain the information and enable you to apply it to your own workflow. And we'll also be showing some of the settings which are accessible from the, actually it's a menu bar that's a typo. I'm sorry about that guys. Uh, we're going to be showing you how some of the settings are assess accessible from the menu bar of the chart so that you don't have to go to the settings. You can do it straight from the menu bar on the chart. And specific to part one, we're going to demonstrate four different ways to access the chart settings window. Part one covers the general tab. So we've got one video that covers one tab on the chart settings. Also, we're going to be showing you how to access the learning center. And then here's the bonus material included with part one. So you want to make sure that if you haven't viewed part one or if you missed the bonus material because you didn't watch part one all the way through, this is what you missed out on. Make sure you go back and check that out. Very important and valuable information in there. In part two, we're going to show you patterns are specialized chart studies. So you can add patterns to your charts in addition to chart studies. There are three basic types of patterns, classic, candlestick, and Fibonacci. And of those three, the candlestick patterns have source code which you can copy and modify for your own custom solutions. Some of you who are familiar with writing code for Thinkorswim will find this incredibly valuable. So you want to make sure that you view part two, but also view the bonus material that's included with part two because in addition to these details, we're also going to be showing a little bit more detail about how to work with candlestick patterns. And as far as tabs, we're going to be covering the price axis as well as the time axis. So part two covers two tabs. And again, as a reminder, this video is part three of the three part series. And let's dig right in and get started. And I think it's handy to check out our cheat sheet here for that particular setting. And you can see that I've marked this as impacting all charts. So everything that you do here on this tab is going to be global in scope. It's going to impact all of your charts, not just the chart that you're working with. Although if you want to set a time frame for an individual chart, you can do so. What you set up here for your favorites are going to be applied to all charts. In other words, whatever time frames you have listed here in the far left are going to be the same time frames available on all of your charts. And let's remind everyone exactly where to locate those on the charts. I'll go ahead and close out of the settings and go over here to where you select the aggregation period. You see the favorites here? This is where your favorites will show up. Okay, so I want to make sure you guys connect those two. So when you go to settings and you go to favorite time frames, all the changes that you make here will be applied to that little shortcut that I showed you. And it's really simple. You can see what I've got listed here. I've got one minute, five minute, 15, 30, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly. 
Those are just the time frames that I use frequently. And there's nothing magical about those time frames. They just happen to be the time frames that I use most frequently when working for clients because most of the work that I do on Thinkorswim is in building custom projects for clients, individual clients. So I'll just show you real quickly how you can navigate this screen. If you want to move and change the order of different time frames, you notice I've got the one highlighted at the top there, the one minute. You can move that down to the bottom if you want or anywhere in between. You can move it back up again. Okay, so that's pretty simple. You can also click and drag. Okay, you see how I was able to click and drag that? I did it twice there so you guys could see it. And if you wanted to edit that time frame, you can hit the edit button. And this is pretty much what you have available from that shortcut I showed you in the chart setting. Let's go ahead and capture this. Okay, make a quick little capture of that right there. Okay, we'll cancel out of this, cancel out of this. And then I'll go ahead and bring that back in. And if you go ahead and access that little shortcut there that I showed you, you got your favorites on one tab and to the right of that is your time frame. Okay, so notice all of that. And then if you go ahead and, and then look at that screenshot that I just took, notice how closely they match. So this is where it's coming from. When you look at the time frame here, this little shortcut here, when you go to settings and you go to favorite time frames, that's what we're talking about when we edit an individual time frame. Okay, so you can adjust to tick range or time and you can change it from intraday to daily to custom. If you want custom, you can select a start date and an end date or you can select up to this many years or this many months or this many days. You see how that works too. Or you can choose a custom time frame, you know, from this to that. So if you want to do some back testing or take a look at what your indicator looked like uh, back on June 1st, then you can just simply change it to June 1st. That's how that works. Okay. I'm not going to get much more into detail than that from here because from here, this is where we really want to create our favorites. So for instance, I'm looking at my favorites over here and I don't have one for a 20 minute. So let's say I wanted to do one for a 20 minute. Here's how you would do that. Go ahead and add a time frame. It's set to time. I want an intraday time frame. I got to select how many days I want to appear on the chart. Now, if I'm working on a 20 minute time frame, I might want to have 15 days. And then instead of one minute, now you can click and drag this little marker here. So you can put in custom time frame. So if you wanted to do, for instance, a 35 minute or a 33 minute or, you know, any anything in between here, you sky's the limit. You can choose any amount of time that you want here. OK, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a drop down. I'm going to select 20 minute because I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can add that in. So I'm, now I'm going to hit the add button. So I've created my time frame. I hit the add button and you can see it down here. 15 days of 20 minute bars. And then if I want to move that up into the right sequence, then I put it right here. Okay. So that's how you do that. I'm going to delete that and you can do the same thing with any of the other types of aggregations. You can use a tick. You can create a custom tick. Uh, if you want 512 tick, then you go ahead and add that in. But you notice I only added one day. All right. Well, what if we want to have more than one day? Well, then we change that to three days. Let's say we want three days. And there you have it. And then if you hit apply and OK, then that favorite immediately becomes available on all of your charts right there from that little shortcut. And now let's spend a little bit of time working at the time frames from this section of the chart here, because I think this is where you'll find it most useful and most flexible. For instance, you can see that this is the last one that I added to my favorites. And you can see that when I have one of the favorites selected, it appears at the top. It's pinned to the top and you can see the little star there. And that is the active time frame. If I wanted to change this to a weekly time frame, then I select that from the favorites list. And when I view the favorites list again, you can see that weekly time frame has now been pinned to the top and the daily time frame is now listed in its proper order. And if you wanted to customize your favorites list, you can do that from here. So from here, you can jump straight to that screen that we were examining before that allows you to update your favorites. So let's say you wanted to do something that you didn't want to add to favorites. Let's say you wanted to adjust the time frame and it's not something that you want to add to your favorites. Well, you do that right here. 
and I've already shown you how you create a tick chart time frame. So let's go ahead and use that as an example. Let's go ahead and create five days and we'll pick like a 1600. Okay, so 1600 tick aggregation period, five days, hit OK, and it automatically sets the chart to that time frame. You haven't added it to your favorites. It's not available in your favorites list, okay? Uh, but you just create it on the fly, and when you no longer need it, you set your chart back to daily or whatever one of your favorites that you want to use. Now, let's say you had one that you were experimenting with and you found that 1600 tick chart of five days of data is very useful for one of your indicators and you wanted to go ahead and add that to your favorites list from right here without even bothering to go into the settings and add it manually you just go ahead and click that you see how I click that right there see that star now is solid well I'll do it again I'll uncheck it you see that star is hollow so that star being hollow means that is not one of your favorites so if you go ahead and click on that okay you see now the star is solid so now that will appear in your list of favorites watch we'll go ahead and switch it back to daily and now we'll go ahead and adjust the time frame and you can see that it appears right down here uh, because we added it to our favorites right from this screen now you can't click and drag and move these around so if you want to change the order of these you can't do that from here you would have to go ahead and edit your settings and you can do that again from the very bottom here where it says customize list and then you can go ahead and access these different time frames and you know move them around if you want okay and then I also want to show you this other thing here okay so we'll go to daily and then I want to show you how to do a custom time span I called it time frame but it's actually a time span all right span of time customized remember I gave you the example let's say you've got an indicator and you want to see what that indicator looked like for instance what, what about this chart right here we'll just look at this and we'll say okay what did this chart look like at this point right here okay you see the date right there February 24th 2022 all right so let's go ahead and update this February 24th okay and then oops I don't know why that says five minute I wanted it to say daily okay and so it's gonna plot a chart that starts at January 1 2022 and ends at February 24th 2022 and it's daily bars there you go so now the bar that is current on the chart the bar that is all the way to the right the last bar on the chart is February 24th instead of today June 11th and then you also have a little notification up here this is something I don't think that I've really covered in detail but you see that little information icon it's an exclamation mark inside of what appears to be it might be an octagon or it could be a circle I don't know but if you click there that'll give you information that's important sometimes a study will throw an exception and it will appear here and the notification will inform you on why the study is not displaying why it's throwing an exception so there's very useful information here in that information icon so whenever you see that you should click it and read it to understand what it's trying to tell you in this case all it's doing is simply informing you that you are using a custom time interval that you're using something other than the current live bar on the chart very important and all you have to do if you want to change it back to normal is go ahead and select daily from your favorites or any of the other time frames from your favorites and now it's no longer using a custom time span now it's back to current date and time all right so that concludes the favorite time frames and we've also covered aggregation periods in general and how to access that from the shortcut menu at the and the title bar of the of the chart itself and the next step is to review the next tab which is appearance let's begin by taking a quick look at our cheat sheet and on the cheat sheet we can see that even though we have this notification at the top that these settings affect all chartings in reality these settings affect only the chart from which you have opened the chart settings tab so all of these settings that are marked in this magenta colored rectangle are going to be isolated to an individual chart not all of your charts and we're going to review each of these briefly and show you how they impact the appearance of the chart but before we get into all the details I wanted to mention two of these settings right up here at the top you notice the chart mode and you have some options here to select monkey bars monkey bars expanded seasonality 
we're not going to go into any of those, but I will show you that there's another way to access this setting. And the same thing with the chart type. Chart type, you'll notice some familiar options available here. Hakanashi is here. Line, area, equivolume. And so let me go ahead and close out of these settings and I'll show you where these two settings are available without having to open the settings. If you just go to style from the menu and right here, chart mode, chart mode, there you have the monkey bars and the monkey bars expanded and seasonality. And then the same thing with the chart type. It's currently set to candle and you have these options available here. So those options are available without opening the settings directly. Everything else must be adjusted from this tab right here. Okay, and I said already we're not gonna be going into the chart mode or the chart type. So you can go ahead and experiment on your own with these settings and pick whichever one seems to work best for you. But please, one thing important to note here, if you do apply the Hakanashi type of chart, I wanna show you something very important here. This, this is really, really important, so I'm gonna take the time to demonstrate this. I'm gonna do it from the other screen too. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. Take a look at the Ichimoku that's on the chart right now. Take a really, let me zoom in so you, so you have more detail to look at, you know? I mean, so you can see exactly where the crossover points occur and everything else, okay? So all of these plots from the Ichimoku are based on the price data on the chart. And when you change the chart type from candle to the Hakanashi, the candles will change. In other words, it's a modified candle. The open, the close, the high, the low, all of those values change when you switch to a Hakanashi chart. Watch. Did you see the candles change? I'll switch it back again. This is really important, so please don't think that this is a waste of time. Please don't gloss over this. Please make sure that you understand this. This is very important. So here's a regular candle. There's the Hakanashi candle. Now, when I switch those, did you see any changes in the Ichimoku? You did not. Why is that? Because all of the chart studies that you will apply to a chart will always use the true candles, the real candles, the actual open, high, low, close of the candles that make up the chart. Simply by changing from a candle to a Hakanashi, does not make any of your indicators you've added to the chart conform to the new prices that are computed to display the Hakanashi candles. In other platforms, that's not the case. In other trading platforms, if you change the chart type to Hakanashi, then all of your indicators that you've applied will automatically adjust and update to read the data from the Hakanashi candles rather than the natural candles. So it's very important that you understand this distinction in Thinkorswim. And if you ever do have a need for doing a moving average or a MACD or an RSI, stochastic, any other indicators that you might apply to a chart, if you need them to be computed directly from the Hakanashi candles, it requires a custom chart study. And I've done that several times in the Q&A form. You can search Hakanashi in our Q&A form and you'll find plenty of examples of that. Okay, so we'll set this back to candle, get back into our settings and go to appearance and let's go ahead and cover the rest of these. These are really self-explanatory. You might not really understand what border up and border down means, but it's essentially the outline of the candle body. I'll go ahead and change the color of the border up so that you can see the difference on the chart. I'm gonna use something that will stand out, something like white. So we'll go ahead and change. So now you can see that all the up candles change from a green border to a white border. I'm gonna change that back. And then the same thing with the border down. We'll change that to something that contrasts against that. You can see that they've all changed. And it also includes the wicks. So border up and border down includes the color of the wicks. Change that back. Dojis are gonna show up as this, whatever color you select here, we can change it to yellow. Maybe that will stand out more. Yeah, there you go. So if you wanted that to stand out more and yellow did the job for you, then you can change that to yellow. Now, dojis, in this case, these this is the classic definition of a doji, which is the open and close are exactly the same value. A lot of people have different variations of the doji, but the classic and true definition is based on the close and open being exactly identical. You can also select to choose the fill up and fill down. Okay, that's just the candle bodies. What I would call that is the candle bodies. So by default, they have the down candles are filled and the up candles are open and you can adjust that and change the colors as you want. If you want to turn off the wicks, go ahead and uncheck that box. That makes for a funny looking chart, but 
who knows somebody might have a use for that all right so we've covered the the candles and then the next everything else down here is going to be covering the the other elements on the chart so for instance the cursor when i move my mouse across the chart you can see the crosshairs there and you can change the color so we can change that to yellow if that jumps out at you and stands out more and is easier for you to see just pick a color that works for you and the other thing that you can adjust is you can turn the cursor completely off so that when you move your mouse cursor across the chart you have no crosshairs or you can change it to horizontal if you only want to see the horizontal uh, likewise with the vertical I'm gonna leave mine set to cross snap crosshairs to and it's set to none and you can select open high low close okay individually or you can select open high low close as a group and I'll show you what that does well let's first do the close because that might be less confusing so you're gonna snap the crosshairs to the close now watch what happens when I move my mouse cursor across here you can see as I move it from left to right the horizontal line of the crosshairs is going to be tagged to the close of each bar okay same thing if you set it to open then you move your mouse cursor across the chart it's going to be snapping the horizontal line to the open of each bar rather than the close and if you wanted to do open high low close then you select this and then you can go ahead and move your mouse cursor and it will automatically snap to any one of those four data points on each of the candles I'm going to leave mine off next we have color as symbol ticks okay volume bars so the volume bars you see those on the bottom here you can turn those on or off and we're going to see that in the next four tabs but since we already have the volume bars visible here in our appearance tab then we can go ahead and adjust these settings and identify exactly how each of these settings are going to impact the view so we're going to go ahead and turn it on and you can see that what happens is the colors of the volume bars are changed and updated to match the colors of the candles simple right and then you can go ahead and set a preset color so if you want them all to be the same color you can select that it's a radio button in other words it's either or and then if you wanted to change the color you can go ahead and adjust that here okay just a couple of more settings here we've got background so the background color is adjusted here and you can change the chart to white or any other color that you might feel is appealing to you and easy on the eyes I think that's what it was set to before yep and then the chart grid okay so let's first turn the grid off so that you can see what the grid actually consists of let's go ahead and turn the, turn the grid off and hit apply so you can see what happens there is all of the grid lines disappear both vertical and horizontal and if you wanted to adjust the color that's available here you can put them whatever color you want if you want them to stand out you make them a brighter color if you want them to fade into the background you can make them a color that more closely resembles the background that you have selected for your chart okay so we have completed the appearance tab and the other four tabs that are left have very very few settings and many of the settings are going to be similar among them so we'll just go ahead and review these very quickly so perhaps I should explain the different terms here because some people might not be familiar with it. Equities, that's going to be stocks and ETFs and things like that. Options, that's going to be for stock options or options on futures. Futures, that's going to be for all of your futures contracts. And in Thinkorswim, all of the futures contracts have a prefix of a forward slash. So you'll be able to identify a futures contract by the ticker symbol. If it has a forward slash as the first character, then it's a futures contract. And then we also have Forex, and there's hardly anything available there to view on Forex. So let's go ahead and take these one at a time. We don't really need to spend a lot of time on this because most of these are pretty simple. You've got price type, price type last, bid, ask, and mark. Now for equities, I recommend you always use last. The bid, ask, and mark are sometimes only available during intraday timeframes. So if you leave it set to last, which is the default value, then you're going to have the best compatibility, I believe. And adjust for dividends, well, you can select special or all, and we can actually use the ticker symbol that we have listed here. Notice there's a dividend of a buck 49 here. Let's go ahead and cancel out of settings, and let's take the Ichimoku off the chart so we can clearly see the candles. And maybe what I'll do also is I will change this to a line chart and I'll explain why. 
There we go. We change it to a line chart. Now a line chart is going to display only the close of each candle. All right, so we've taken away the open, the high, and the low, and we're only plotting the close. And what I want to do is draw a line here. And maybe draw a line here. Okay, I just want to make some marks on the chart here at points that are easy to identify, but you might not pick up on after we make the change to the setting. So I just want to mark these here because these are values that should change if the chart is going to start adjusting for these dividends. Notice you have a buck 49 dividend here and a buck 49 dividend here. So let's go ahead and mark this one as well. All right, good. So let's go ahead and go back to settings and go to equities. And we're going to move this off to the, boy, where am I going to put that? Let's put it over here because I've got a few lines in view over here. Okay, so adjust for dividends. We're going to change that to all and then hit apply and watch what happens to the line chart. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this. Look, you see these lines which I drew at the exact points of price right there. And you see how now there's a gap between the price. So what has happened is the chart has been adjusted for dividends from here backwards, okay, from here to the left, okay. Everything from the bar that follows dividends forward is unchanged because when you apply that setting to adjust for dividends, it applies it in a backwards fashion. So it changes all of the historical prices based upon that dividend. It does not change anything in front of, or to the right of, let's just say, it's, it does not change anything to the right of the dividend. So this dividend here is impacting all of the price bars to the left. And this dividend here is affecting all of the price bars to the left of it. Okay, this dividend here is not adjusting any of the price bars to the right of it. Okay, very important distinction. So we'll go ahead and turn that back off. And special, that means special dividends only are adjusted. So we're going to turn that back off and hit OK. And you can see all these lines now are right back where they were before, touching the price at each point. OK, so let's go through the rest of these. Show corporate actions. This was a setting that we had turned on previously when we were examining the time axis. So we've already covered this. But show corporate actions is basically the dividends and the earnings. OK. And then this one here, we might need to search through some different charts to find one that has CNBC video, but we can apply that and see if that shows up. Yeah, okay, we've got a couple here. So you can see that little symbol there, NBC Peacock symbol, little icon there, okay? And I think that if you uh, right click on that, yes, you can show news and that will show you the news and there's probably a video associated with that. Yes, there is. I'm not going to bother playing that video right now. So if you want to view news events that came from CNBC, Thinkorswim provides that. Not for all stocks, but for the stocks that are widely followed. 3M happens to be one of the stocks that are very widely followed. So it is included. So we can turn that off and show options. We've already covered this in a previous section of the video related to the time axis. So we don't really need to work on that anymore. Okay, and the next setting is for showing the social sentiment, and that is an index compiled from various social media platforms, and the indicator attempts to identify a bullish or bearish sentiment based upon the overall aggregate of sentiment expressed through various forms of social media. So let's go ahead and turn it on so you can see what it looks like. Hit apply and OK, and then we have to navigate to a chart that actually has some coverage on that so we'll change it to Apple and you can see here I'll just go ahead and open that up a little bit and you can see that we've got the red and the green and the blue blue is neutral green is bullish red is bearish and you can see that these little peaks occur in these little troughs and I have no clue whether there's any value to this whatsoever you can evaluate this on your own I have no explanation for this I have a totally neutral feeling about it. I don't know if it's useful or if it's harmful. I really don't. But it's here and now you know how to turn it on. 
So let's go ahead and get back to our previous view. All right, good. So now we'll get back to the settings and we'll get back to equities tab. So now we're going to show you how to adjust the volume subgraph. If you uncheck this box and hit apply, the volume subgraph disappears. That's pretty self-explanatory. We'll turn that on and I want to take you over to the general tab because there's a setting over here called overlap volume. And if you turn that on and click apply, then it removes the subgraph and plots the volume as an overlay. Okay, and the same thing happens here if you go ahead and change this setting for the color bars and hit apply, it, it still works. Okay, in other words, all of these settings that adjust your volume subgraph, whether it's overlaid over the price graph or whether it's in a separate subgraph of its own, all these settings are still applicable. Okay, so we'll get right back to where we were. So that takes care of all the settings for the top section here. And I wanted to bring in a little cheat sheet because I think it's important that you guys understand that even though it has this note here, these settings affect charting of all symbols except options, futures, and forex. And what I want you to understand is that just like all the others, everything here in this section is local in scope. In other words, if you turn the volume subgraph on or off, or if you turn the show corporate actions on or off, any of these settings here are going to be specifically to the chart from which you open the settings window. Okay, it's not going to affect all of your charts. It's going to affect only the specific chart that you're working from. I want to make sure that's clear. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom section here. You've got three settings, three check boxes here. One for showing extended hours, one for highlighting extended hours when they are displayed. And then you have this little setting down here at the bottom. It's grayed out right now, but we're going to uncheck this box and this is going to become available. Now, this is very, very important. I want everybody to pay very close attention to this. You have to turn this off. I wish that they would either remove this entirely from this page or add this as an option for all of the other tools on Thinkorswim. Let me explain. If you're working with a custom watch list column or you're working with a study alert or you're working with a custom scan, any of the other tools, including conditional orders, if you're working with any of the other tools on Thinkorswim and you're working on intraday time frames, you absolutely must turn this setting off otherwise your intraday charts will never match up to your scan results to your custom watch list columns to your study alerts for any of the other tools why because the other tools on thinkorswim do not have this option and the other tools on thinkorswim essentially have this setting turned off the setting doesn't exist but it's just the same as if the setting were turned off okay so it's very, very important that you understand that. Now, if you're showing extended hours trading session, it doesn't matter. Okay, notice that's grayed out. So if you're showing extended hours trading session and you likewise show extended hours trading session for those other tools that I mentioned, custom watch list columns, custom scans, study alerts, conditional orders, then make sure that you have them all set to show extended hours and you're okay. All right, but if you turn off show extended hours trading session, you absolutely must uncheck start aggregation at market open. Okay, what it does is it changes the start point. For instance, if you have a one hour candle and you have this turned on, then that one hour candle is going to start at 930 a.m. when the regular market opens. If you turn this off and you have a one hour candle, that one hour candle is going to start at nine o'clock because every hourly candle should start at the top of the hour. But when you turn this on, it starts at the market open. As soon as the regular session opens, that becomes the start time for the first hourly bar. Okay, and the remaining three tabs are very similar to what we have here under equities. In fact, I think equities probably has the majority of the settings. We'll go to options and see that we have very similar options available here for extended hours trading session. And you have the ability to change the display price type and you have the ability to turn off open interest or theoretical price, how would you plot an options contract? That might be a question running through somebody's mind right now. So let's go ahead and quickly answer that. I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to go and get an OPRA code. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's O-P-R-A is the acronym. I'm going to go grab one of these. I'm going to right click over an at the money strike here and I'm going to select copy and you see the dot 
and the ticker symbol and then these numbers and letters that is the opera code or opera code however you pronounce it so I'm going to copy that now I'm going to go back to our chart I'm going to paste that in I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut I'm going to paste it I'm going to press enter to activate that and now we've got a line chart of that options contract so this is showing the price history of that specific options contract and you can see that open interest is displayed down here at the bottom and that is because it's turned on here in this tab if you want to turn off show open interest then you can turn that off and it, and it goes away if you want to turn off show feel price you can turn that off that was the magenta colored line I'll go ahead and turn that back on and maybe it might be easier if we show that and then turn the chart style back to candle so that you can see the individual candles of that options contract and then the magenta line is the theoretical price or the Theo price as they call it for that options contract and you have the same option here to turn volume on or off so very much like the equities tab you have actually fewer options to choose from here so let me go ahead and cancel this and let's go to a futures contract and we'll go ahead and access the futures tab of the settings and you can see you've got display price type same options here as before I'm going to recommend that you leave that set to last which is the default the daily close you can have that set to last or settlement price the settlement price is slightly different than the 415 p.m. close each exchange has their own rules for determining the settlement price the settlement price is what is used at the end of the day to settle accounts for contracts that are held overnight and so how the daily settlement is computed for each individual instrument is published by the exchange so you can go to the CME groups website and look at individual contracts you'll see that there's different ways of determining the settlement price for equities versus bonds versus energy each one has a different way of determining the settlement price and it really goes back to the days of the pit trading and that's where that comes from and the settlement price is only available on a daily time frame chart there's no other way to get the settlement price on thinkorswim I have begged and pleaded with them for the past 10 years to include settlement price in their code so that we can access that from an intraday time frame like we can on every other trading platform on the planet but apparently the data vendor that they use makes it impossible for them to do that and this is the best they can do so they can display the settlement price as the daily close or you can have the 415 p.m. daily close and you can adjust that right here in the settings adjust for contract changes boy that's a topic for another entire video if you're not familiar with futures contracts they have rollover points and that's what you see in these green lines here on the graph you see the green lines those are the rollover points and so if you want to adjust for contract changes what that does is it takes out the gap there's usually a gap during rollover from one contract to the next and this will adjust for those change you see how that gap changed you see that it was very subtle so let me do it again I'll turn it off and you're gonna watch right here where that green line is and I'm gonna hit apply that's it so that's the adjustment now some contracts are gonna have a larger gap than others let's go ahead and take a look at oil for instance just so you can see the significance of this setting in different contracts and also you can play around with this on your own now that you know how to adjust this and see how it works for the contracts that you're trading so again watch the section of the chart where the green lines intersect the price action as I hit apply you see those changes adjust for contract changes all it's doing is it's using a backward adjustment so it's adjusting all of the prices from the green line to the left okay everything in the historic record gets adjusted based upon that gap at the rollover point which means that if you adjust for contract changes if you have that turned on it is very possible that somewhere in history if you go back far enough you will see negative values because it's adjusting the price based upon those gaps and if those gaps cause a reduction in the historical prices it's possible for those historical prices to be driven below zero what's really significant for me is that if this setting is turned on and you're looking at this price right here this candle right here in February middle of February at this rollover point that's not the price that was traded at that time that's been adjusted because of the gaps that occurred later on 
So I always have that turned off, but some people will have a preference for turning those on because it takes out the gaps. And, you know, some people feel that the gaps sort of disturb, you know, their indicators and it's a matter of preference. So I'm not going to discuss that much more. So open interest is just the same as with options. You can turn that on or off. You see that on the bottom subgraph. Show options, the same exact way it works with equity, so we don't need to cover that. Same thing with the extended hours trading and the highlight extended hours. All of this applies. Everything that I explained on the equities tab applies here. We have an additional item here to show contract change events. If we uncheck that box, you can see the green lines showing the rollover points disappear from the chart. Okay, And then you've got the show volume subgraph. There's really nothing much to show you there other than it works exactly as it does on equities. Forex, I really don't have anything to show you here because I don't trade Forex. I don't have any experience with that, but I know with Forex, this setting becomes pretty important. Whether you display the bid, the ask, the mark, or the last, a lot of times the trade activity in a currency pair is very limited and you won't have a continuous stream of trades to be able to plot candles on a chart. And so in that case, you probably want to be changing it to a mark. So if you have a currency pair that is not widely traded, you may need to adjust this setting. And if you are trading Forex pairs, you already understand this. So I don't need to go into any more details than that. Okay, so we've completed all of the tabs in the chart settings. And now it's time for the bonus material. And just as a reminder, the bonus material in today's video is going to be how to save a chart style and how to load a saved chart style. These two go together hand in hand. And we're going to compare those to a different method for saving and copying your chart layouts. And that is using the study sets. We've got how to save a study set and how to load a saved study set. I've got a chart already prepared. I'll go ahead and show you which studies are loaded on that chart. It's Bollinger Bands, TTM Trend, and Parabolic SAR. Nothing magical about this. I picked them at random. I just put them on the chart. Please don't leave a comment asking me how I trade this setup. It's not a setup. I don't trade this. It's simply here as the example for the bonus material. I'll go ahead and hit cancel here. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this in half. On the left side, we're going to use the style sets. And on the right side, we're going to use the study sets so that you can see some of the subtle differences between how to apply each one. So it's really simple to save a style. You just go to style, save style. And in this case, I want to make sure I check this box to include patterns and study set. Okay, so if I had added patterns to this chart, that would also be part of the style as I save it. So I'm going to click save. And now you will see that that style appears in this list here. If we go to load style and we go down here to the bottom where you see video style, that's the one that we just saved. So now we're going to apply it to this chart here on the bottom. Now I'm going to maximize this chart so that you can see it clearly. And then I'm going to go to the style menu and then go to load style and then select video style. Now let's go ahead and minimize that chart and you can see the result. It's an exact replica. The only thing that didn't get saved is the ticker symbol. So the ticker symbol at the top is still Apple and the ticker symbol at the bottom is still IBM. But if you look at all of the studies that were added to the chart on the bottom, there are all of our studies. And if you had adjusted any of these parameters, all of those parameters would have been carried over and saved in that style as well. Now, in addition to the studies, what also gets saved are the settings. So I'll just quickly review some of those settings. I'm not going to show you all of the settings that I adjusted. But for instance, I turned off the show high-low bubbles. And then for the price axis, I turned on fit studies. For the time axis, I turned off show expiration Friday. And for the appearance tab, I changed the chart background to pure black and I turned off the chart grid. And on the last four tabs, I turned off the volume subgraph. And I think that actually covers all the settings that I adjusted there from the defaults. Okay, so now let's see how we apply the study sets. First thing I'm gonna do is a little trick here. I'm gonna save this style 
on the left. I'm going to save it without studies. I'm going to put NS within the name of the style so that I know that it does not include studies and I'm going to make sure that this box remains unchecked so that I do not include patterns and study sets and then I'll save that and then I'll go over to the right hand side and I'm going to apply that style to the top chart. It's right down here you see that video style NS. Notice it did not carry over any of the studies. I still have the Ichimoku that was applied to that chart. So none of the studies were included, but the style itself was. So we've got the black background, we've got grid lines turned off, the volume subgraph is turned off. All of those settings that we applied have been carried over now to this chart. And let's say I wanted this chart with the Ichimoku to be saved as a study set that I can then apply to the bottom chart. So I go to studies, Save Study Set, hit Save, and then I'll go ahead and maximize this chart and then show you how to go ahead and apply that study set to this chart. So we're going to Studies, Load Study Set, and Video. Just disregard this one that says Video Study Set. That was one I created earlier for testing. This is the one that I just saved, simply named Video. I'll go ahead and apply that. And what we've got now is the Ichimoku has been applied to that chart. If we had more than one chart study included, then all of those chart studies would have been loaded. But notice the background of the chart is still the default color. We still have the volume subgraph. We still have the rollover lines. We still have the chart grid. We did not affect any of the settings. Okay. We did not affect any of the settings when we saved the study set and applied that study set to a different chart. That's the difference and that's how you use the style sets and the study sets. Let's take this example one step further. If you remember the bonus material from a previous video in this series, I created several of these chart grids as a demonstration. So we'll go ahead and select one of these. I'll go ahead and pick Video New 2. And this has got six charts. And let's say we wanted to quickly apply our style and our study sets. So we go style, load style, video style, style, load style, video style. Once again, style, load style, video style. That takes care of the left side. Now for the right side, I really don't think there's any need here, but we'll go ahead and load the video study set. No change there because that chart was already set up that way. But we'll see these other two charts here will adapt as we apply that study set. So again, it's you go to studies, load study set, and then pick the study set that you want to apply. Okay, and now you understand how to work with the study sets as well as the style sets. You should understand also the differences between each one and how you can apply these in your own work to make it easier for you to set up charts and keep things organized exactly the way you like. Now we're looking at the original chart grid that I created for the video series, which is named Video. And the one last little tidbit that I'll show you, because I know someone's going to ask about this, probably in each of the three-part series, each video, we're going to have comments asking, how do I get rid of those buttons on the right-hand side? And if you view sessions one and two, you'll understand what these buttons do and what this sidebar means and how to apply it to your trading. But for now, all I'm going to show you is how to turn it off. And that's right here, show sidebar in cells. Uncheck that box and that cleans up the chart, gives you more screen real estate for charts. And you can turn it on at any time that you need so that you might decide to add, for instance, an active trader gadget to your chart. And you can do so right there. And then you can go over here and turn that back off again to make the best use of your screen real estate. Okay, guys, and that concludes part three and the final video of this series on chart settings for Thinkorswim. I hope you followed along with all the examples, and I hope that you are now able to understand how to work with your charts much more efficiently and set things up exactly the way you like and apply your settings consistently across the platform to your various charts. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. 
Be sure to visit www.hondashtech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.